we hear the word potential difference potential potential drop voltage all the time when we are learning about electricity it could sound very abstract at times because we keep using these terms and we keep solving problems but it's very hard to visualize what potential is that's the problem with electricity so today i want to take some time to give you some sort of an intuition behind what the word voltage or potential difference or whatever that is what does it truly mean so that we can next time when you're reading about this it will make more sense to you hopefully <laughs> all right so i'm going to give you i'm going to make you understand potential difference directly by taking an example imagine we have two points in space so this is point number 1 and here is point number 2 okay let's me call this as point number 1 let me call this as point number 2 and it could be a point here and then point there and it could be vacuum there's nothing right there absolutely nothing so no we are in empty space okay and i'm going to assign a number to that and i'm going to call that volt number as a voltage voltage is just a number that we can assign to space so let me call this voltage v1 as say 10 volt and let me call this voltage v2 as 12 volt if as of now you don't know what voltages mean it's okay no problem i'm going to explain to you what this is using this example so 10 volts here and 12 volts here what does it mean all it's telling you is that if you were to take a coulomb take a coulomb and you move it from here to here you took a coulomb from your pocket and you move that coulomb from point 1 to point 2 then you would have to do work and the work that you would have to do will be so the work that you will be doing in this example i will be doing so work done by me in moving a coulomb so i'm going to put that coulomb over here from point 1 to point 2 okay so that's a huge notation but try to understand me doing the work in moving a coulomb from point 1 to point 2 that is 2 joules in this example and how did i get that 2 i just take the difference v2 minus v1 so in simple terms this is just v2 minus v1 and that's the meaning of potential or potential difference in this example because we are taking the difference so potential difference is just an indicator of work done work done by an external force like me in moving a coulomb from one point to another now there is a small detail involved when you do this work make sure you do not accelerate the particle meaning you make sure that the speed at this point and the speed at that point remains the same if you accelerate the particle you have to do an additional amount of work besides this so i can write that over here as uh, this is the work done work done without acceleration or without um yeah without except without a net acceleration from point 1 to point 2 that's the idea behind the voltage now let's think about this what if instead of moving a coulomb from here to here we ended up moving say 3 coulombs so what if i moved 3 coulombs from this point to this point what would the work done be then by me i think that's that's clear to move a coulomb i have to do 2 joules of work to move 3 coulombs i have to do 3 times the work so in this example the work done by me to move 3 coulombs from 1 to 2 would be 3 times 2 that would be 6 joules in other words all i have to do is 3 times v2 minus v1 what if instead of moving 3 coulombs or 4 coulombs or whatever that is what if you move a charge in general what if i'm moving say a charge q 
a charge of Q coulombs from point 0.1 to point 0.2. Now, the work done would be to move the charge Q from point 0.1 to point 0.2 would be Q times V2 minus V1. For simplicity, I'm just going to call this as W. Okay, I don't want to write all these indexes. And these indexes is understood. At least I can write from 1 to 2. Right, that much I will write. But the rest of them are understood, let's say. That's the work done by me in moving the charge Q from one point to another. And so now I can define mathematically for the first time what the potential difference is from this example. Potential difference V2 minus V1 can be de defined as the work done in moving a charge Q from 1 to 2 divided by the charge. That's what this is. It's how much work you do per coulomb in moving it from one point to another. That is the potential difference between two points. So the unit turns out to be joules per coulomb. And thus joules per coulomb is what we call as volts. Okay, so this is going to be our definition for potential difference. Notice one thing, potential difference when we say in physics we always mean final minus the initial point or final minus initial value. Since the difference in potential, it's the final potential, the potential at the final point minus the potential at the initial point because we are moving the charge from 1 to 2. I hope this gives you some simple idea, some simple intuition behind what potential difference is. So let's understand some simple properties. Property number one about potential is that since it depends on work, it must be a scalar quantity. So voltage, uh, I'm going to write that over here. Hmm, yeah, okay. So let's write characteristics. One, voltage or PD or potential difference is scalar. Okay. Voltage is truly the indicator of work done per charge. So it's an indicator of work done on charge. Indicator of work done by an external force without acceleration per coulomb. I will say on a coulomb. On a coulomb. And notice one more thing. We did not specify the path that we took to go from one point to another. We could have gone straight, we could have gone in this curved path, I could have go like this and go all the way till here and then come back over here and the work done becomes path independent. So the work done does not depend on path. Have you seen that before somewhere? Must have seen it. Does not depend on path taken. Okay, so let's take another example over here. Let's take an example. Let's take a couple of examples. So if I take two more points, let's call this point as point P, let's call this as point Q, and let's say um, the point P has a potential, let's call it as um, 5 volts, and let's say point Q has a potential of minus 3 volts. I mean voltage, we can put negative signs, no big deal. Minus 3 volts. And suppose I move, let's say, um, minus 2 coulomb this way without acceleration. How much work do I do? Pause and try to figure out. Be careful. Okay. So the first example. Work done work done by me to move this charge, I would use this one. It's always going to be Q into V2 minus V1. The charge we are moving is minus 2 coulomb, minus 2, and V2 is the final potential, 5, minus, minus 3, plus 3. So the work that I end up doing is a negative one, um, 8 times 2, I end up doing minus 16 joules of work. And the reason I end up doing a negative work, it's, it's basically telling me that 
I am putting a force in the opposite direction of the displacement. That's what it's telling me. And we will see later why that ends up becoming true and everything. We'll discuss more about that a little bit later. Okay, one last example. It's an example over here. This time, what I'll do is, I will give you the two points. Let me call this point as point A and point B. And here's the data. I tell you to move a 3 Coulomb charge from here to here. The work done by me, without acceleration, by me, let's say is 30 joules. I can now ask you what's the potential at point A and point B. We'll go backwards. Well, we can now say, look, potential difference, final minus initial, VB minus VA, should be equal to work done per charge. Since I do 30 joules of work for 3 coulombs, per coulomb I must be doing 10 joules of work. So this is 10 joules per coulomb, which is 10 volt. So I know the potential difference is 10 volt, but wait, what's the potential here and potential here? This number is telling me that VB is 10 plus VA. Look, this tells me VB is 10 plus VA. So if you could tell me what VA is, I could tell you what VB is. Or if you could tell me what VB is, I could tell you what VA is, but nothing is given. So what could be the answer? Well, I could say VA is 0 volt and VB is 10 volt. That's fine because you'll end up with the same answer. Or I could also say VA is 100 volt, but nor and VB is 110 volt and either one is fine and so this is telling you something something deep about voltage it tells you that voltage at a single point can be any arbitrary number that you choose what matters for the work done is the difference in the voltage voltage at any point is usually chosen arbitrarily so what we want to do is in this room if I want to assign voltage at every single point I would start first by assigning a single point in space an arbitrary voltage a random value and then using that point I'm going to calculate voltage at every other point in the room that's exactly what I did over here I assign an arbitrary value for voltage at A and then the voltage at B gets fixed and so this tells you one more thing one last characteristics that voltage uh, I don't think at any point, any point can be arbitrary. No, uh, let's not write it that way. Voltage at any point depends on, on our reference. You can say that. Okay, any point uh, depends on our reference. It's on reference. Just like how I took zero volt as a reference for my point A. I have to take a reference point and assign a voltage at that point and then voltage everywhere gets fixed. Okay? So I hope you are able to get some idea behind what voltage is and we are going to see more about this in the next episode. So stay tuned.